Hello and welcome to this week's Beginner's Guide. We will be talking about the Scifish NPC faction by discussing all of the units, mods, and the doctrine which can be purchased at the Scifish dwelling. Right now I'm thinking that I want to talk about clearing out landmarks in the next week's uh, Beginner's Guide, but if there's anything else that you want me to cover, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Last week there was a request for me to cover the synergies between the secret techs and the races that you can choose at the beginning of the game, which is something that I do want to cover on the channel eventually, but it's a pretty tricky subject. It's a large subject. There's a lot of different variations that you can go down with each combination, and I think there's going to be a lot of very big balancing changes to those um, those combinations over the next few months. For example, Assembly got a, a pretty massive nerf, but I, um, I'm i not sure if they're going to make any changes to how some of the secret techs play and how the combinations work together, because I think there will be some people who find some game-breaking combinations. So, yeah, I think making videos on the NPC factions and how those can interact with the different races and texts that can help you make informed decisions on how you can um, develop your your favorite play style. The first unit we're going to talk about is the Scyfish Chrysalis, which is one of my favorite tier 1 units in the game. He is quite squishy with only 25 HP and one shields it's quite easy to kill off the chrysalis but if you are careful with the chrysalis they can do a lot of damage so it is it is worth the the risk of moving them in as long as they're not outright going to be obliterated on the next turn the fact that they have a secondary attack which can stagger multiple units is very very useful and not a lot of tier 1 units have an ability that's quite that useful it can only be used once per battle, which is something that you may overlook. You may think, oh, I can use this a second time and that'll get your chrysalis in a really bad situation when you need them to stagger something. Uh, but for the most part, I think the benefits outweigh that tiny little um, thing you have to take into consideration. When this unit reaches prime rank he evolves into a spawn and then I believe the spawn turns into the hunter and the hunter turns into the siren and after that the medusa unit uh, you have to purchase you can't evolve into a medusa unit it's slightly different than all of the other little sci fish but I do like that that this unit has um a way to evolve that was always one of my favorite mechanics in Age of Wonders 3 for getting the higher tier units and a lot of there's a lot of really interesting interactions between the Scyfish units for example I believe the Siren can impregnate enemy units to create another chrysalis so you can you can generate this unit and there aren't a lot of NPC factions that can generate units um, from enemy units it's a pretty cool special ability kind of like mind control and there are some other neat little things you can do with the mods like increase the range on this unit to make it a little bit more viable in the late game the next unit we're going to talk about is the Scyfish spawn which comes with a little bit more HP than the chrysalis it comes with 10 more health points but unfortunately no more defenses, no more extra shields, so it's still pretty squishy and a unit that I'd recommend keeping pretty far back. Its primary attack only has a range of 5, but does 2 more points of damage than the Chrysalis, so it, it is a little bit better at dealing that damage. Having 40 movement points means this is the most mobile of all the Scyfish units. Uh, some of them are flying, so they don't have to deal with mountains, uh, the penalty like with mountains on the strategic map, but in combat this unit can move the furthest, which is quite useful, useful for getting yourself some nice flanking shots or maybe getting yourself into position to use this fascinating bond, um, which can essentially take a unit out of the fight for 
two turns. Fascinated units can still move, but they they can't use abilities or attack. So the fact that they are just done for two turns is pretty awesome. And a lot of units don't have defense against psionic um, status effects, so you're more likely to get that than other things. It is risky because Broken Mind only weakens them to more psionic damage, so if you don't get your fascination, you kind of are putting some units at risk. It's a bit of a dice roll, so yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I believe this is the only Scyfish unit that comes with a smaller target. If it was a flying smaller target, that would be pretty awesome. It would be very dodgy, but as a floating smaller target, um, he just has that 20% modifier, which I believe is the best uh, you know, dodge modifier out of all of them. The next unit we're going to talk about is the Scyfish Hunter, which like the last evolution does a little bit more damage than the previous one. The Chrysalis did 8 points of damage, the, um, what was the last one before that, the Spawn did 10, and now this Hunter does 12. But unlike the previous two, this attack is a melee attack, which means it bypasses both armor and shields, which means that the only thing really defending a unit from damage that this this guy can do is their psionic resistance, which if you're facing off against somebody who is friendly with the Scyfish means they can kind of build their units out to counter your your damage channel and if they have some other kind of um, background in psionics then they'll they'll probably be able to to counter this unit pretty hard but most units are going to be very very weak to its attacks and the fact that he can take six points of health each on each hit against a non-mindless unit is a pretty massive um, bonus. There are units like mechanical units, the mindless ones, that you won't be able to heal off of, but overall I think this unit is a really nice melee unit and has quite a bit more defense than the other Scyfish. Three shields is, is not amazing, but it's pretty good for this tier two unit. Only having 35 HP is, is risky. It means that you have to keep an eye on this unit. But I think all these other nice little bonuses make it a pretty nice investment. I would recommend maybe a Chrysalis, buying a Chrysalis and hoping that it evolves into a Hunter and then trying to take advantage of it versus buying a Hunter from the Dwelling because of how easy it is to kill off this unit when it's being useful. It has to move into combat to to be as useful as it can be. I think that um, we haven't talked about captivating, have we? Yeah, the difference between captivating and fascinating is that units cannot move. We can just check that really quickly up here by typing in captivating. Uh, that wasn't, here we go, captivated. They cannot move or use abilities versus fascinated units. They cannot use actions, but they can move. So it's basically like a slightly upgraded version of what the spawn can do. And I believe that they're at the same range. Both of them have a range of seven. So yeah, pretty similar, but slightly better. The next unit we're going to talk about is the Siren, which unlike the last few Scyfish evolutions, doesn't do more damage than the last version, but it does do it at a range versus the hunter having to get in and do melee attacks. So I do think that makes it a little bit better. And the fact that it has broken mind makes it quite a bit better than the than the hunter's attack. I, I do like keeping my distance and attacking from far away when I possibly can. And broken mind pairs really, really well with all of the other little Scyfish units, weakening them to all the attacks and all the status effects that you may want to try and apply. Enticing, enticing Bond is um, it's another upgrade from the last version, which was Captivated, and which 
locked a unit in place, they couldn't move or do anything. Enticing forces a unit to run towards you using all their action points, which is, yeah, it's it's pretty powerful. If you use it on the right unit, that can really change the, the tide of the battle. And I also really like this secondary little ability, Impregnate, which is very tricky to use until you get the mod, which increases your range for your Psyfish abilities by two. So then you can just kind of get kind of close to the enemy line, panic a unit, and that will turn into a unit that you can control eventually. I wouldn't try and push your Siren too far forward into the enemy lines too quickly because it still only has three shields, so you do have to be relatively careful with them. It does come with more HP than the other previous evolutions, but yeah, I, I'd be very, very, very careful with him. Uh, but one of the nice things is because he doesn't evolve into another Psyfish, he gets a pretty useful prime rank. The extra range, I believe, applies to Mind Flay and maybe even these two things. I might want to check the description of of range if there's nothing else that I wanted to mention really quickly. He's flying, so he's a little bit harder to hit. He's got less movement points, so yeah, I'm keeping him further back is probably a good thing because it's harder to run him away from danger. So yeah, let's just check what it says when I type in range, if it's just for attacks or if ranged weapon. Um, Alright, so I think it may only apply to the primary attack. The last unit we're going to talk about is the Psyfish Medusa, which is an amazing support unit. This nurturing bond is it just like, yeah, when you read it and wrap your head around it, I think it will blow your mind because it lasts for three turns and the cooldown is two turns, which means you can go around putting this on all, all of your units slowly and surely healing them all up and giving them a massive amount of resistance to damage. So a handful of Medusa units can make um, three or four stacks very, very difficult to wipe out. And I'd say near impossible, to, to be honest. You get two Medusa kind of supporting each other, healing each other up um, with some other Psyfish units in there. That seems like a pretty powerful combination. If you compare this guy's attack to the Siren, it's no better than the Siren. So he's he's not an attack unit, he's more of a support unit. The cycle of rebirth means that if you bring a couple Chrysalis into the fight and they die, you can essentially resurrect them. If you use this on a Siren, not nearly as good as using it on a Chrysalis, so I think some combination of two Medusa, two um, Chrysalis that each Medusa could then replace once per battle and maybe a siren to impregnate some units here and there or two would be a pretty awesome stack, a pretty powerful stack, but something that could be countered fairly easily because it's all just one damage channel, it's all psionic damage, so it, that would be something that you would need to take into consideration um, when you're, you're picking out your targets. That kind of stack would probably handle a landmark really well, but maybe not a human player as well. This unit has stagger resistance, so um, immunities, it can't be staggered, so you can you can pop out your healing basically when you need to. It requires a full action, so um, you know, having seven range means you can do it to anyone, but you need all of your action points, and being staggered would be terrible for this unit. I think that's part of why he has that. The, I think the last thing we want to talk about here is maternal instinct, right? So if a chrysalis dies, which this unit can replace easily, then you can start doing a lot more damage um, with this guy and causing insanity, pretty awesome. But also Psychic Eruption seems like a pretty powerful ability if you have um, multiple Medusas in a in a battle. If you had like four or five Medusas in a battle and you start losing a bunch of little Chrysalis all over the place, I could see that being just like very, very broken, but also very, very fun and very situational. So maybe something the devs wouldn't address. Being a large target, he's a little bit easier to hit, but as I said earlier in the video, he can take cover. This guy can't. But yeah, by being floating, he has to worry about um, 
a lot more melee units than these two. These guys have a nice advantage being flying with shields. This guy has shields on the ground, so not quite as good as shields up in the air. Oh, and he has defensive mode, so pretty cool. Pretty nice little thing that can keep your Medusa alive. Okay, so to look at the mods that you can buy for this eye fish, I have restarted this combat with a couple little differences. I have a secondary hunter which has three of the four mods. It has the Chimera mod, the Bar Mind Barrier mod, and the Eyes of Eternity. And then I have this one which has all the same mods as all of these other little units. I've put the Mantra of Illusion on him, the Eyes of Eternity, and the Chimera mod to basically show how I would recommend you you build out your Psyfish. You should basically have these three mods or the three mods that I have on this unit because you either want to go for all offense with the Mantra of Illusion and then these other two little supplementary mods or you want to go for defense with the the mind barrier. The mind barrier I think is probably the best decision for the Psyfish. Just giving them a little bit of extra defense seems like a pretty good idea, but applying hallucinating and adding 20% damage to all of your attacks is a is a pretty pretty nice bonus. The mantra of illusion can apply lightly obscured a uh, their support abilities count as psionic, but for whatever reason, even this unit's uh, nurturing bond doesn't count as psionic support abilities. If I go over here, we'll see that he's got nurture, but no lightly obscured. I, I did try it out earlier with these guys. I, I applied it to him, and when he used Cerebral Overdrive, it... Um, it applied lightly obscured, so it does work, but apparently not with the Cyfish unit. The lightly obscured can apply to units, but only if it's on a different psionic unit. Um, the hallucinating, I think, is is pretty awesome. It's pretty useful having that hallucinating effect. Does make this almost uh, worthwhile all by itself, and an extra twenty percent, pretty nice. So. I think we're ready to talk about the mind barrier now, which we only have on him. Over here we have our mind barrier, which gives you some status resistance to psionic status effects. Pretty useful if you're facing off against another player who's friendly with the Cyphus. You may want to put these on your units, and then you're, you know, you're protected from that damage channel, and you can't have the status effects applied to your own Cyphus units. Um, yeah, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Just having a little bit of extra defense is quite nice on your, your lower tier units. Whether or not you want to invest your Cosmite in them is up to you. I like to because they're more likely to evolve into better units. But, you know, it's your decision. Um, the Chimera Focus is amazing. I really like the Chimera Focus. If I, if I go to this unit and I try to attack over here, you'll see that I can apply Burning, Electrified, and Poison. Not quite as good as Hallucinating, Burning, Electrified, and Poison, but still pretty good. That Chimera effect applies a lot of damage over time. Uh, if you're lucky, you can get all three of them on a target, but you know, just having that extra ch like dice roll for each damage channel I think slightly increases the odds that one of them will go through and that you'll get some some nice powerful damage over time and when you're doing repeating attacks from like a range or you know even at upright it that that's I think a pretty a pretty easy thing to overlook you might think oh only 40 percent that's not that useful or only 20 percent that's not that useful you know if you take enough dice rolls eventually you'll get what you want from from the dice and the last one is the Eyes of Eternity, which is amazing. It, it increases your range and all of your psionic abilities. So this used to be 7, and now it's 9. And 
let's go check on the siren. I wanted to make sure impregnate goes up. Oh, it doesn't go up to three range. I thought it did. It will enticing bond definitely becomes a little bit easier to use, but yes, important little side note with the siren, it doesn't actually increase their ability to impregnate, which is a shame. I would like to see that. Maybe that will change in a future balancing change or update. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about here is the Doctrine, which you can buy from the Scyfish with the Siren's Canticle. It gives all of your colonies plus 6 happiness income and all friendly units gain plus 200 morale in your territory. That's a pretty minor bonus, especially considering that it costs just as much as all of the other Doctrines which you can get from the other NPC factions. And I'm a pretty big fan of those, those little bonuses that you get. Six happiness is like a worker. That's not a whole lot of happiness. It's kind of nice and could help you out early in the game, but I think in the late game that's barely going to affect anything. It just decides what free things you get, how often you get free things, and um, yeah, by that point I think a lot of things have already been decided. Uh, and the little extra bonus to morale pretty minor, maybe help you get more crits or not fumble in certain battles, but I just don't see it being worth the investment of an entire Doctrine slot. Like, honestly, the, the fact that you're spending a Doctrine slot on that is is a pretty big deal I, and something I would never do. So, yep, that's all the things that I wanted to cover for the Scyfish. We'll talk about Automaton soon and the growth and Paragon, I think, after that. That sounds like a, a fun order to cover the NPC factions. If you want to see my one covering these spacers, that's already up on my channel. Hope to see you around for the next one.